Good morning, everyone. Uh, we're just going to start up now in a minute. Okay, guys, um, <coughs> I'm going to, uh, my name is Michael Dalton. I'm the principal consultant uh, at Synergenics. No details here. Um, in, a, in a second, we're going we're gonna to kick in to uh, the webinar. I would just mention that if you have questions throughout, there is a Q&A section where you can uh, post a question. Um, and we also have Sarah on the line who will moderate that uh, and just interject uh, as they come up. Um, looks like everybody's actually joined now, so uh, we'll just go ahead. Okie doke. So um, some of the, the issues um, or challenges that we, we come across uh, when working with telco or communication companies is um, they essentially have custom systems that they've potentially built over the years um, and it involves a large overhead and upkeep uh, they become kind of slow to scale um, and it leads to increased downtime or even uh, in a lot of cases uh, point solutions get implemented and you, you end up with more and more data silos um, you guys always tend to have complex requirements as well recurring invoicing uh, billing management and obviously contract and subscription management as well and uh, not to mention service provisioning so um, really the point of today's webinar is to show you how you can service quite a lot of these processes directly within Salesforce as a platform. Okay. Um, now this is really what we're going to look at today. Okay, so we're going to look at the sales uh, aspect. So um, effectively um, quoting your customers, okay, and how you manage uh, the account. So looking at account structure, how everything is linked together. Um, we're going to create a quote from a contact. Uh, we're going to review the different options for quoting uh, within Salesforce. Uh, Salesforce has a great application called CPQ uh, that's going to, to really help us put something meaningful together for our customers. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and generate a sales order. Okay. And then we'll uh, launch into service delivery. So um, the way we, we generally structure it is we will use the cases object or service cloud uh, within Salesforce to manage the provisioning or service delivery um, of what a customer may have ordered. Um, we also use it to manage um, support cases or support tickets that come in. Uh, we'll also take a look at checklist uh, templates and project management. That is a, uh, an aspect that we have developed. Uh, we'll create a contract and uh, we'll complete out the service delivery uh, process as well. And then last but not least, we will look at uh, billing. So how we can potentially manage uh, billing to customers within the Salesforce platform. So we will review billing items, we'll go ahead and create an invoice, uh, we'll even take a payment, and then we'll review some of the other billing options or uh, concepts that we could we can have within Salesforce. And then at the end, uh, we'll do some Q&A uh, time depending, of course. Um, again, as I say, you, you know, feel free to, to post in the Q&A. Um, um, we can get some questions answered as, as we go as well. Um, but we will take potentially a bit of time at the end of each section. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to head over into Salesforce. Okay, so um, Presumably, you're all quite familiar with Salesforce. Hopefully, you're in Lightning. Uh, if not, this is a, a good opportunity to uh, take a look at the new UI and how it, how it sits. Okay. Um, so, first of all, I am in my sales uh, application. Okay. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on this journey as a salesperson to begin with. Okay. I'm just going to go to one of my accounts here. I'm going to pick Edge Communications. Okay, so when we're using um, the various products provided by Salesforce, like CPQ, uh, Service Cloud, Sales Cloud, 
we've got a whole bunch of additional objects that uh, you know, we would traditionally have if we were just using sales cloud. Okay, so you'll notice that we've got a uh, contracts object here. Okay, we've got quotes, we've got assets. Okay, we've got orders, we've got subscriptions. Um, and this is really all going towards providing a real 360 degree uh, view of the customer, uh, what contracts they have in place, what assets, etc. Okay, so I'm just going to go over to a contact here. And I'm going to go to Sean Forbes, our CEO. And I'm going to create a, a quick quotation. Okay. Now, um, what, what we often find, if you actually have a, a reseller network, okay, um, you would need a billing account, but you'd also need a, uh, a service end user, if you like. Um, so within... Uh, the quoting mechanism, we can specify both, okay? Um, so I'm going to set a start date for uh, this quotation. So when the, the customer would like the services to start, and I'm going to set a subscription term as well. Uh, let's make it uh, 36 months. Okay, I can see that it's gotten created an opportunity for me. Okay, as a salesperson, I really just want to get down to uh, quoting the customer. Okay, um, but from a management perspective, I have my high level opportunity there. Okay, <clears throat> so we're now looking at Salesforce CPQ. Okay, so this is actually a custom object um, that they provide within the package. Okay. And what I can do is I can go and hit this edit lines button. <coughs> okay. So I'm just going to choose my standard price book. Okay, no. So um, this looks quite a lot different if you're familiar with quoting in Salesforce. Um, CPQ actually adds a whole new dynamic um, to your, your quote process. It allows you to really uh, take control over how products are priced uh, within the org. Okay. So we can see that we've got our start date in there. We've got our subscription term. So I'm going to go and add some products to uh, this quotation. Okay, doke. I am going to pick my fiber 100 megabit broadband. Okay, and this is where things start to look a little bit different. So I'm going to go ahead and select that product. <coughs> and what I can do within CBQ is I can start to build relationships between products. Okay, so what I can do is suggest to a particular sales user. Uh, for instance, an alternative service, and I can say, you know what, if if the customer goes to an unlimited broadband package, uh, it's you know, 20 pounds additional uh, from an upsell unit price, okay? Uh, I could go and select that if I, if I wanted, uh, or I could go and choose some additional service for, in, for instance. So I'm gonna select here, Surf Protect Web Traffic Management. I could select some hardware, um, or I could also select an installation, okay? I'm gonna add hardware later, um, but for the moment, I just want these three products save. Now, I'm doing this in quite a manual way just to illustrate the capability of, of the actual application. Um, you know, it's, it's completely within the realms of possibility whereby you select a, a fiber 100 megabyte broadband uh, product and we automatically uh, assign these products, kind of skipping that previous step. Um, but it really depends on your process and how, how you like uh, to offer upsell opportunity, etc. to uh, your sales guys. Now, with my products added, okay, my fiber uh, 100 megabyte broadband is actually a subscription product, okay, so is my Surf uh, Protect, okay, so what you'll notice is um, I've got my quantity, but I've also got my li list unit price, uh, and my net unit price is worked out from the subscription term uh, by the, the, monthly, the monthly fee, 
Okay, giving me a net total of 1620. Uh, similar with the surf protect uh, web traffic management. Okay, uh, it's, it's coming out at 450 based on my subscription term. My uh, fiber installation is a one off charge, so that stays the same. Okay, well, let's look at some other options. Um, so, what I'd like to do, I'd like to actually uh, group out these particular items on the quote, okay, to make it more. Um, readable for my, for my customer. So I'm going to add a group and I'm just going to call this connectivity. And what I'm going to do now is add a second group. I'm going to call that hardware. Okay. And what I want to do, I want to add some additional products here. So I'm going to pick the Mytel product. <coughs> okay. So one thing we'll notice is that the um, the unit price is zero here. Okay. So um, at the moment, unfortunately, my uh, my supplier doesn't give me a um, you know a catch-all unit price through the year. So I'm actually receiving pricing from them. Um, on a kind of per order basis, um, you know, or maybe they actually send me a, a spreadsheet um, at the start of every month with the, with the pricing for the, the products that I resell from them. So what I need to do is actually treat this particular item um, as a cost-based item, okay? So if we look at the options here, I'm just going to look at the other pricing methods available. So we have list, which I can use from um, you know, a sus subscription product point of view or an installation uh, point of view, for instance, because I, I have a set amount for that. I can specify a cost and add uh, you know, markup or uplift. I can also um, price based on block pricing. So in a given range, what's my per unit price? Um, I can also select something with percent of total if I wanted to uh, provide hardware maintenance, for instance. I can have a, a product that works off that to determine um, a percentage of the total hardware as a maintenance fee. Um, however, in this example, um, we have got a cost-based product. So I am going to enter a unit cost here. Uh, we can see my net unit price uh, jump up there. And then I'm going to add a markup as well. And I'm going to just put a 15% markup onto um, the actual product okay so I'm selling it for 102.35 uh, my gross profit amount is 13.35 okay per unit now there's a couple of other options um, you know I may sell for instance hardware um, or even subscriptions in a more segmented manner I may need to do um, you know hardware call downs or I may need to apply um, a grant, for instance, to the first year of a subscription. Um, so what I can actually do uh, using the hardware call down method as a, uh, an example, I can go ahead and segment a line. So I'm going to put in the subscription term here three, even though this is a non-subscription product. And that's going to tell me that I want to subscribe to this hardware for a three month period. And then I'm going to segment the line. And what this gives me um, is the ability to call down in, the, in, in different months, uh, different quantities, and, and so on and so forth. Okay. So what I'm going to say is uh, in month one, I want a quantity five, one, two, five, and one, three, five. Um, and then I can add unit costs. And again, I might have a different unit cost in different months. I might be able to add different markup or offer a, a lower markup based on bulk, uh, bulk discounts. So um, we can really be flexible with how we configure this. Okay. Um, this can also work on a quarterly basis. So if, if you do you know, call downs or um, you know, beat your billing frequency, for instance, is quarterly. Um, if it's yearly, we can do that as well, um, and also custom. 
uh, you know, billing terms. So maybe somebody wants to call down hardware in a six uh, month period or an eight month uh, period. Okay. Um, but what I'm gonna do for the moment, I'm just gonna go back and uh, order my units here. Customer wants uh, one. Okay, so I've got a lot of flexibility here as to how I would like to uh, quote a customer um, or price uh, my items and group my items, etc., and display them on uh, my quote documents. I can also display things as options. So while uh, while the customer does want the connectivity, they mentioned that they have, um, you know, they, they've got a, a desk phone that's pretty old, uh, or, or should I say a uh, VoIP phone. Um, so I'm giving them the option to replace this, but I don't want to include it in the total. I just want to show it as an option. So I can go ahead and mark that particular item as optional uh, and not include it in my, in my quote total, okay, on displaying to the customer. Okay, though. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm just going to save this particular quote. Okay. So some of the other functionality within CPQ um, is that it allows you to create uh, documents. So I can preview and generate uh, various documents. I can have them loaded into the system, okay? And I'll just very quickly do this. Um, I would say this is develop development.org, so it's low on uh, resource. This may take a, a moment. Uh, it's a little quicker in production. Okay. Okay. So again, we're, we're generating the quote documents from within uh, the CPQ application. We can see it's grouped my, uh, my line items um, out by my, uh, my grouping set within the um, set within the quotation. Okay. This is completely uh, customizable. So you can have your company logo, you know, you can, you can have as, as much branding or styling as you want. Um, to this to, to fit with your uh, your company, okay? Um, that can also be sent out then via the quotation uh, from Salesforce. There are available integrations also to uh, DocuSign, for instance, um, and also uh, EchoSign. Okie doke. So um, I've gone ahead, I've built out my, my quotation, okay? Um, and I'm, I'm ready to basically accept this, okay? And create a sales order. Okay, so the customers um, tell me that they want to proceed. So I'm just going to go ahead and accept this uh, quotation. Okay, um, what the system has done, it's actually gone and closed one my uh, my actual opportunity for me. Okay, again, it's not my, my main concern as a salesperson really. Um, and I've got my, my order here that I've created as well. Okay, so let's just go and take a look at that. Okay, so there's a couple of uh, things here um, that we want to kind of uh, uh, allude to. Okay, so um, obviously our order gets created with our, with our line items as we had um, specified them. Okay, but we also have this uh, case here. Okay, so this is, uh, if you're familiar with Service Cloud, you probably use cases from a customer support perspective. Um, again, cases serve as a really, um, a really nice container for any sort of provisioning process as well, because uh, they allow you to use email to case functionality. Um, so any interaction with suppliers or customers about a particular um, service can be all contained within the one record. Okay, and we'll take a look at that in a, a couple of minutes, but that's our provisioning of fiber, uh, 100 meg broadband uh, case, okay? Um, at this point, I mean, it, it is entirely optional whether you would want to create a sales order or not. Um, a lot of companies who work with you as best practice um, can I would tend to agree as well because 
uh, a customer may want to actually cancel an order, you might want to send out a, an order acknowledgement um, once created, just to ensure that there's no um, you know, errors on the order or, ca or cancellations required. Okay. Um, however, in this uh, specific case, we are ready to go ahead and activate the order. So this might be a, um, what we've seen, it might be an actual provision function uh, to review orders and then um, go ahead and activate or approve them. Okay. So I'm just going to do that now. Okay. <laughs> and as a result of, of the order activation, we've actually gone ahead and generated our contract. Okay. So this is, again, this is all handled by the CPQ package itself. While it's a, uh, a quoting tool, um, if you like, or a quoting service, it actually provides the whole contract asset and subscription management side as well. And that includes amendments to contracts, management of renewals, etc. So um, it's quite expansive and what it delivers. I'm just going to go ahead and take a look at this contract. Okay, okay. So uh, if we take a look, we've got our start and end dates as specified, our, our uh, contract term in months. Okay, We've got our subscriptions linked to um, our particular contract. And again, we can see our case. So we're, we're just building kind of visibility throughout the system. Uh, we've got our order over here as well. Uh, link to link to everything. Okay, um, just to show at the top right. Okay, so we can obviously go and activate our contract. Um, you know, there may be another step required there. Um, if not, we can auto activate. Um, we've also got regrade or add. So that's essentially a an amendment to this particular contract. Um, we can also uh, raise a C subservice, and I'll, I'll actually just do that. It won't uh, it won't affect anything at this time. Um, so what I'm, I'm doing is raising a cease request. Um, so I'm putting in the date. Um, I'm just gonna hit save. And we can see that it goes and creates a case again uh, underneath this particular contract for a cease of service. Okay, um, and again, you'll have a process off the back of that, but I'll show you where we define those particular processes now in a moment. Um, I would just very quickly go in and take a look at a subscription. <laughs> so effectively, what we do um, uh, as part of the process, off of the back of subscriptions and assets, we actually create these billable item records, okay? And that fuels our, uh, you know, our billing side of things, essentially. So we have quite a granular uh, table, if you like, of billing item data, uh, which we can then you know, further process maybe into a sales invoice or a credit note or a purchase order, purchase invoice. And again, we'll, we'll take a look at that uh, shortly. Okay. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do very quickly is just show you uh, how we, we actually can amend a, a contract as well, uh, because it is quite important. It's something that uh, is, is often needed. So I'm just going to go to this existing contract that started on the, uh, the first or the second. I'm going to go ahead and hit this regrade um, or add button, if you like. Um, Okay, and what it does, it will pull back my subscriptions related to this contract, and I will confirm that I just want to amend it, essentially. Now, at this point, CPQ will create an amendment opportunity in the background for you, and it will also direct you to this amendment quote. Okay. So... <clears throat> What we can see now is a quote total of zero. Okay, so it's it's saying at this time you're, you haven't added anything. So uh, effectively, the subscriptions and the costs has already been, um, you know, forecasted. So it's really what you want to do to take action against this. Now, if I wanted 
to let's say cease the um, the service. Okay, so off the back of let's say our cease request, I can reduce the quantity down on a given line item. Um, this particular item was billed annually, so I can see that my uh, my net total of one four one one twenty seven. That is, that is essentially my credit back to the customer if that's the process I want to follow. Obviously, each company um, is individual um, and that, you know, your process can be catered for here. Um, but effectively, what you're doing here um, is just offsetting the forecasted revenue on the subscriptions. Again, any, any kind of credit back to the customer is usually handled in a separate process, let's say, through the billing items. Okay. Um, so what I actually might want to do is regrade this service. So actually a customer has come back and said, you know what, I want to upgrade. So I'm just going to go and add a new product. I'm just going to select this fiber on the broadband up to sell. Okie doke. So that's now, um, that's now added my product. Okay. So, <clears throat> Again, depending on your particular process, um, you know, if, if it's not your process to credit a customer back, for instance, um, you just merely take it from the existing contract, you can obviously uh, do that as well uh, if required. Okay. Um, but you can see that the proration is essentially taking place within the, within the screen here. Okay, um, we often get asked um, about, let's say, amend and extend. So, how would we extend a contract um, or even start a new contract? You know, all, often the best answer to that is to simply cease the existing contract and create a brand new one. You know, it's, it, it's kind of um, it's this this process is really good for co-terming. Um, but if you're if you're kind of saying okay, we want you to sign up to a new contract for thirty six months, uh, we often find the cleanest way to do that would be to cease the existing service and create an early renewal essentially. Um, but again, it is possible within CPQ. Um, it's just uh, cleaner the, the other way. Okay, uh, and we can talk about that more um, in detail. So. Let's go ahead and save this quotation. Okay. And we can see this is a, an amendment for contract uh, 114. Um, and in the same suit, if I were to go and accept this particular quotation, it would go and update my, my master contract to reflect the, uh, the changes, essentially. Okay, it just takes a couple of minutes to uh, process. What I'll do, um, we'll actually just move on to service delivery in the meantime. So, so again, up to this point, we have gone and generated a quotation for a customer. We've uh, we've provided them with different options. Um, we've booked their their service, created a sales order. We've activated the sales order, thus creating the contract and subscriptions and billable items. Um, our assets have all, all also been created and linked back to the uh, account itself. Um, so really what needs to take place next is the provisioning of the service um, in this particular uh, example. Okay, so I'm just going to refresh my queue. Okay, and I will see my provisioning of fiber 100, 100 megabit broadband for edge communications here. So I'm going to click on that particular record. Okay, so again, if you're familiar with Service Cloud, um, this probably looks slightly different to how you're, you're used to looking at it. Um, we just customized the page out here a bit um, to be a bit more useful. So um, I'll, I'll just walk through the, the page very quickly. So over on the left, 
we have our details, okay, so our high level details, our cases linked to our contract, our sales order, our, um, sorry, our contract, our contact, and uh, the account as well. Um, I've also got knowledge enabled over here. So, um, you know, if I'm new to provisioning or, um, you know, I just need to kind of refresh my, my memory about anything, I can see here on the left, I've got uh, fiber broadband way leave. I can see an article here telling me what I need to do, uh, you know, what I need to arrange for broadband installation um, or what to do, for instance, this would be more of a support um, issue, but maybe faulty uh, broadband router, uh, whatever it may be. And I can use those articles, um, you know, to, to kind of service customers. So I can attach the article to this case or uh, I can insert it into an email to, to send out to a customer. Um, uh, okay. I can also measure uh, SLAs as well. So if I had a an entitlement process, um, I can also have those running here on the milestones uh, detail. Across the top, I have my uh, standard uh, process for uh, working on a case. So it starts off new. Uh, I'm in the middle of uh, working it, so I'll just set it to working. Um, I can escalate it, or of course, I can go and close it off, okay? Um, below that, we have our related tab. And what I can see here is the high level order details, okay? I can see my order products related to um, the order. I can see my high level contract information. And I can also see my subscriptions related to that uh, particular contract, okay? To go. Next to that, I have checklists. Okay, so what we actually do for any given product, um, you know, that, that you may actually sell, you may have a given checklist that you need to adhere to um, to actually deliver it, and that hence the provisioning of the actual service. Okay, so um, very quickly, how we we actually manage that is through these service templates, okay? And these service template records are linked to a given product. So if I just were to uh, take a look at one of these very quickly. So I can set these uh, particular tasks to a given department. Uh, I can assign it to a user, a queue for instance. Uh, I can assign a specific user, so again, if if the um, you know if you have a wide range of actions that need to be taken to provision a service, you can assign them out to different departments or different users uh, within within the company. You know, one could be uh, using the CEASE as an example. One one could be raise credit, um, and that goes to a particular finance user or the finance department. Um, whereas from a provisioning point of view. Um, you know, it might be to contact supplier to arrange, um, you know, connectivity essentially. Um, so that would be uh, sent to a different department. Okay, below that we've got a, a task type. So is it a provisioning task? Is it a cease task? Is it a migration task? Okay, and again, we can use this based on where we've uh, launched the actual um, checklist or case from. Uh, we can determine which uh, which of the following it needs to be and which records we need to pull onto the case. Okay, we've also got task dependency, so we can proclaim that uh, something cannot be um, completed before the uh, prior task that's shown here. Um, we've also got start date offset, so how many days beyond today, for instance, should the, um, should the, the task be set to start? Uh, what sort of, uh, excuse me, what order should it show uh, on the case? Um, and then end date offset. So this is um, set in hours. So how many um, errors after the start date, um, you know, do, do we have to kind of complete that? Um, and obviously you just enter the number of errors. Um, if it's a number of days, it would just be the, that number in errors, okay? And then we've also got our task description, what we need to do. And again, you would have multiple records per product. Um, you know, you could obviously, if, if your process is the exact same for pretty much any 
an activity product, you would just have these templates assigned to, to those products, the one kind of process, if you like. Whereas um, having the template as individual records, it will as well give you the flexibility to have a slightly different process if required uh, for a given product. Um, you know, and especially if you take on new products uh, or services even. Um, you know, you've got the ability to, to create those custom provisioning uh, checklists. Okay, and well, that's essentially what this is. Okay. So from a, an activity point of view, um, so I can go ahead and do all of the usual things. Uh, obviously, I can send an email here. Uh, I mentioned, you know, sending knowledge articles earlier. Um, if I had an issue there um, and I happen to have an article handy uh, that, that I was uh, aware that it would fix the issue, I could copy it into an email and send that to the customer, for instance. Okay. Uh, I can obviously log my calls. Um, and more importantly, if it was a, an installation I needed to arrange, I could go ahead and request a, a site visit as well. So I can set service territory, I can look up to the asset. Uh, I can set a time, so I'd like someone to go out next Friday at 12. For instance, I can put in the street address information. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and that goes and creates a work order. Okay. And I can see a service appointment as well. Um, so I don't know if, it, you know, it's kind of 50, 50 whether um, you, you guys potentially have people out on the road. If you do, there's an option to, um, which is what I'm, I'm demonstrating here, is to use something like field service, um, whereby we can uh, schedule our, um, our resources or our, our, uh, field agents, excuse me, uh, to go out on, on site. Okay. So I can see that there's a service appointment here. Uh, I can go and look for candidates, for instance, who would um, fulfill that. Oh, one more friend, <laughs> of course. Um, but again, I can, I can do a lot of stuff with field service here in terms of managing my, um, my guys out on the road. Okay, but that's just a quick nod to that. Uh, if I just go back to my case. Okay. Um, I can also see other things like related cases, et cetera, to this, um, uh, you know, to this customer. So other cases that may be um, going on at the, at the same time from a customer support uh, point of view, for instance. Okay, if I just go back to check this very quickly. Okay, you know. So each uh, each checklist item, okay, for a particular um, for a particular agent, okay, has its own process again. So. Um, you know, we could have an awaiting assignment um, starting point. Uh, it, it's actually not started. It's in progress. We're awaiting customer reply, uh, awaiting supplier reply, uh, awaiting the, the agent who's handling uh, the case, and it's completed or it's been uh, cancelled. We can obviously do things like uh, book appointments from here as well, okay, from a field service point of view. But what I'm going to do, I'm just going to complete these, uh, these out. You can see it's stamping a completed date in. So if I want to measure SLAs uh, on checklist items, I can go ahead and do that using, um, using the checklist here.
Okay. And I can see that because I have completed out my, um, because I've completed out my actual case, uh, case checklist, it has now gone and closed out my, my uh, case. So this is effectively uh, provisioned um, for the, the customer. So you could, again, have a bunch of processes that, uh, that fire off the back of this, um, notifications, etc. Okay. Okay, I'll just uh, I'll just stop there briefly. Are there, um, Sarah, are there any questions or anything like that? No, not at this stage, Michael. Carry on. Yep. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> right. Up. So what I will do now, um, I'm just going to go into the uh, the billing section. Okay. Okay. Okay, so um, obviously after something's been provisioned, you know, it's all agreed, uh, we can go and start billing uh, our items. So we'll see that uh, within the, the billing uh, area, we have billing at HQ, we've got billable items, effectively holding all of our uh, line item data. Um, I think there is a question there actually. Uh, Chris, can you get a copy of this recording? Um, I believe we will have one. Yes. Um, Steve, hi. <laughs> did you want, did you want to ask a uh, question? Um. So you've asked, how do you cope with updating price books when they keep being updated so often? Um, I, th I, I can only imagine that you're, um, you mean when you get, let's say you're reselling from a supplier and, and they're giving you, um, they're giving you different pricing on a, on a monthly basis. I mean, you know, there's, there's really a couple of ways you can do it. There's the example I've given you whereby you don't try and update price books all the time. Um, and in fact, you um, continue to use, um, you know, let's say the spreadsheet or the PDF that they use, uh, or sorry, that they provide you with, and you use that cost-based um, entry for, for items. And I suppose how useful that's going to be to you is depends on how hardware-focused you are as a, as a company, right? Um, you know, if hardware is 98% uh, of what you do, uh, you know, you, you may not see massive value out of that. But, you know, the one thing is that, um, the one thing to remember, to remember is that now your quotes are digitized. I'm going to assume that um, you don't, uh, you don't currently use something like CPQ or you don't quote it in Salesforce. Um, so, at least doing it that way with the cost mechanism and adding uplift, you've got digitized quotes, you can, you can manage them a lot better within Salesforce and you've got records of, uh, of everything. Um, you also then kind of get the knock on effect of managing the contracts and the subscriptions in there as well. Um, another, I suppose another way, if you're lucky enough that you could get a supplier who provides you with a spreadsheet, um, you know, I've, I've also seen whereby, uh, you would have a spreadsheet connected to a price book. Okay, there's lots of really, um, and I, when, when I say a spreadsheet, I mean either a Google Sheet or an Excel sheet. Um, there's lots of apps out there that allow you to uh, connect uh, very, very easily um, between those two, two items. And, you know, it's really just a, a matter of updating, let's say, the spreadsheet. Um, and then it will update your price book. But, you know, again, <clears throat> It's something we get we get asked a lot, but but often you find that uh, the benefit of all of the other aspects of of CPQ, for instance, we're just talking about that, and then the the um, I guess even the knock on effect then being able to manage billing items and things like that within Salesforce and um, really just sending invoice data out your your finance platform, it kind of outweighs um, you know having to uh, just enter the odd um, price really. Um, but again, if you want to have a chat about that, uh, please reach out to me, um, Sarah, and 
uh, more, more information. Hopefully that, that's answered it. <laughs> Probably a bit long-winded, but... <laughs> Okay, <laughs> good. Um, okay, you know, so I'll just touch on some of the things that we have here in the building platform. I know we've only got about 15 minutes left, so I won't take too, uh, too long. But um, effectively, again, just starting from the top, we've got our uh, billable item record. So that, that effectively gets created from anything we can bill, if you like. So at the moment, we're creating them off the back of subscriptions and assets. But bear in mind, we could use that to um, if let's say we had projects or project expenses, um, for instance, um, we could we could create those as billable items as well um, and group them onto the same invoice for a, uh, a customer. Okay, we can also make make uh, purchase order billing items, for instance, um, you know, and, and bill our suppliers this way. We have billing plans as well. So um, obviously, if, if we've got an asset that's one off or um, one-off pricing or we've got a recurring item for instance uh, you know billing plan wouldn't necessarily be um, be necessary because we've got everything we need within that record but um, you may again have a project or a professional services that um, item that you offer and billing plans would allow you to set different uh, billing item creation terms if you like so <clears throat> um, maybe 20 percent up front um, with the remaining 80 at, at project uh, completion or 50-50 or, you know, any, any percentage really um, that you can imagine. Billing plan will allow you to associate that with a given product. Um, and then any time, time it's booked, uh, you, can, you can assign that given uh, plan <coughs> to create the, the billing items. We have transactions, so transactions being uh, purchase orders, purchase invoice, sales invoice, credit notes, etc. Um, transaction items are copies of the billable items uh, that are, are synced uh, and they are linked to the transaction. So again, just like sales invoice line items, uh, essentially. Uh, we use the one object to capture them all. It's easier to report on. Um, and we specify within the record what it is. Um, currencies, so um, this is a bit of a work in progress, but uh, it's nearly there. Currencies um, essentially allows you to do um, dated exchange um, exchange rates, okay, for for a given um, for a given uh, currency, okay, uh, and then tax rates as well. So we can set tax rates uh, within the system, being standard, exempt, etc. Um, currencies and tax rates can be uh, uh, actually linked to a given company. So if you've got multiple companies. Uh, that you bill under, you can uh, have different sets of currencies and different sets of tax rates linked to those uh, those different companies. Okay. Um, and marked as, let's say, default currency. Um, ledgers again, a, a work in progress. Maybe we'll, we'll show that on the next uh, the next demo. Okay. And then we've got our accounts, our contacts, and contracts. Okay. So. Fundamentally, what we wanted to kind of achieve on this screen, um, you know, is, is a way of using pretty much Salesforce standard functionality to, to allow you to quickly build things, um, you know, and manage that whole process. So um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to uh, process an invoice here. Okay, so I'm going to select all of my billable items for edge communications. And I'm going to go ahead and generate the invoice for it. Um, now it's going to ask me what, what's the invoice date. I'm actually going to set it to today. Um, I'll use a very descriptive reference there. Um, and then my invoice method. So really what I'm going to do in this example is I'm going to, I'm going to consolidate the, uh, the line items. So I want to take all of those billing items and I want to put them onto one invoice. Now, if I had selected multiple um, billing items that were, uh, let's say, of two different billing uh, customers or end users or, let's say, a service ID, um, I could select to process the, uh, the selected records in that particular way, um, effectively splitting them by uh, billing customer or even if it was... Um, the same billing customer with two separate end users, so I could, I could split by end user. Um, and again, 
it's just giving you kind of granular control about what, uh, what you want to do uh, from a building point of view. Um, and this is the very manual way, of course, as well. So I would just say uh, process. Okay, and I can go and finish that. And it's gone and created my, uh, my sales invoice. Okay. Uh, here for edge communications, you can see my, my billing items are processed. Okay. Um, I'm just going to go and open that uh, transaction. Okay, doke. And we can see that it's, it's gone and, and created my, my header level uh, transaction. Okay, it's linked to my uh, company that I've specified. My currency is pound sterling. Okay, I've got an exchange net amount and a net amount. Okay, if the currency was, uh, was different, it would, uh, it would show me the, uh, the amounts in the exchange um, section. And then I've also got uh, my four transaction items okay and my transaction items are linked back to my bill billing items as well okay um now um the reason i guess why we're creating the, the invoice in here um is because this now gives us uh, a lot of visibility within salesforce okay so from a a company perspective uh when you think about different departments they can all because it's a custom object they can all have access to see you know outstanding uh invoices they can see uh you know what purchase orders have been raised we can use that purchase order information um you know to to look at kind of stock things like that so again we're just bringing everything um or, or providing if you like as much as the, of the process as we can in salesforce um you know to, to kind of get the maximum ROI out of it and give our users as much information uh, as possible. You know, what we do from there, I mean, if you're not lucky enough to have a, uh, a finance system on Salesforce, and there are some, um, you, you would effectively port this information over to, uh, for instance, if you're using something like Xero, or maybe you're using Sage, or maybe it's even a, a you know, full-blown ERP, um, you would have said, to just port this information over uh, to that billing platform in whatever, um, or sorry, to that finance platform in whatever format you, you required, okay? Whether it's a uh, transactional uh, level or more of a ledger uh, level, okay? Um, but what I'm gonna do very quickly, um, I'm just gonna take a, a payment against this, okay? So, uh, you'll notice down here, I've got a payment object and I've got an authorizations object. And we use a, an application called Asperado. Okay. Um, and it's effectively an integration tool between um, Salesforce and your payment gateway. And I think if we work with about, I think it's like 10 or 12 different payment gateways. So they're a really good uh, source to use. But I'm just going to reconcile this. So I'm going to create a, a payment and it's going to be a, a bank reconciliation, I've called it, um, rather than an e-commerce link. And I'll, I'll, I'll do both uh, just to show you. Um, okay, so the, the customer is actually underpaid, okay. Um, I'm just going to say that they've, they've paid an amount of 500. Uh, and the reference uh, from the bank was... Uh, um, And the payment stage, I'm going to say that that was collected from customer. Okay. Now again, you know, if you were if you were syncing to your your finance system, um, you know, you would you would obviously reconcile this potentially in um, in your finance system, and you would send that information back over um, into uh, Salesforce. Okay. And you could you could link it back up to the to the invoice in that manner essentially. But I've, I've just done it manually to show you uh, there. So we can see that there's an, still an outstanding amount on this invoice of uh, 600.82. Okay, and the payment amount was 500. Okay, there's also another way. Obviously, you can take payment, and that would be through e-commerce. So uh, what I can say is. 
I wanted. To, sorry, I can't remember. The, <laughs> I can't remember the full amount there. So six hundred eighty-two. Sorry. Okay, dog. So I can offer uh, various options. I can give the customer an option to pay by card, direct debit, e-check, PayPal. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just offer um, card and direct debit. I'm going to go ahead and save that record. And I can do a couple of things now. I mean, I could I could automatically create these payment records if I wanted to encourage customers to pay my credit card, for instance. I could use the e-commerce URL on my invoice uh, documents. So what you find is um, a lot of people will actually move the, the sending of an invoice document off the sales force as well, um, so that we have all of the information again in one, in one place. And we're just sending high level information over to our accounting platform. But again, if I go and uh, open this link, so, the customer would have the link on the invoice document. Uh, it launches a screen, fully branded to you, obviously. Um, and it says, okay, it's for a single payment of 682. Um, okay. They can enter the card details here, or obviously, um, they can go in and, and pay by direct debit. Um, so, direct debit. Okay. Um, when, that, um, when that payment is collected, uh, via credit card, uh, we will receive payment information, essentially, uh, the card type, um, and so on and so forth. And it will be, uh, it can be marked as, um, you know, collected from customer, or if you wanted to add a, a further stage, uh, you know, pending reconciliation, because obviously, it's not recognized until really it's, it's money in the bank, right? So uh, you can you can have another stage in here to kind of specify that uh, while it was a while it was a successful transaction, it's not yet actually reconciled. Okay, um, and obviously we can we can spin up a report for that uh, to be managed and and, and looked at from, uh, in your account. Okay, or sorry, your bank account. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we okay. have had one question come in, Michael. Oh, sorry, yeah, go ahead. He's asked, we have some customers that require line level details. How do you overcome that if you've rolled up products by quantities? Hmm, I'm just, uh, I'm just trying to think if I understand the question fully. So, um, when you say line level details, do you mean that, uh, oh, we've ordered five of these, for instance, so you need to see quantity five on the line item, Chris, is that, is that what you mean? And then a unit price? CLI, sorry, can you just specify what you mean by CLI? Contract line items? Oh, fine. Okay. So, um, so the telephone number, fair, fair enough. Okay. Sorry. So, um, yeah, so I guess how we've, we've done that before is, is each line item would, um, you know, have a, a service ID effectively. Um, so that might have been, and um, I always say this wrong, I think it's uh, IEMI or IMEI uh, number or a telephone number, um, you know, or it could even be a domain in some cases. Um, so you can, and, you know, we can port that information over. It's, it's, it's literally just a change to the data mapping, obviously adding the fields to the relevant uh, object so that that can be captured. Um, I don't know if that answers the question, but... Um, I guess, I guess, in, in in whole, what I'm trying to say is the, um, you know, the, the how how these objects look and, and and the feels that you see. That's all completely kind of customizable, right? This is this is just uh, how it is, kind of out of the box, if you like. Uh, but like Salesforce, if we need to add a field here and there, we can do that. If we need to 
you have that map to other objects, we can do that. Um, I don't know where I'm going down the, the complete wrong path there for you, but it, 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 can you give me a bit more? Do you want to follow up with Chris after the call? Because we're getting uh, short on time now. Uh, yeah, if he's happy to do that. If uh, Chris, if you wanted to, um, if you want, I can reach out to you by email or even give you a call, whatever, whatever works for you. You let, you let us know. Um, Sounds yeah. great. Right, okay. Um, okay, so um, I'm just trying to think if this, uh, if this is actually anything else I wanted to show you there. Um, okay, so what have we done? We've taken payments. Yeah, I guess the only other thing on payments is we can obviously take authorizations as well well and then we can have um so again in the exact same way i can take a credit card authorization or a direct debit or whatever it may be um i'm not i'm not really setting a an amount right it's just a, an authorization i'll just say that very quickly um and then we can obviously have payment schedules then again off the back of that so um for instance you know we can have an active schedule here for you know 200 per month uh, if I set that to monthly, we've got lots of options there though. Um, and then I can set the next payment date. Okay, and then that will. Um, oh, we're on the package schedule, sorry. Um, we can obviously then have that. Uh, monthly on that date, for instance, go and collect uh, 200 from the customer automatically. And again, you know, if you if you book a, a monthly billing product, um, you know, using kind of the automation and sales force or with a little bit of thinkering, we can obviously get these uh, records to kind of auto create. You can have a process to seek the authorization and then we can have it link those schedules to that auto authorization on the account once created you know so it's um there's a lot we can do around automation again this is a very manual way i'm showing you just so you understand the kind of uh, the framework if you like um okie doke um if i just go back here i mean other things obviously i didn't touch on usage data so um you know if you have the ability to connect to you know the platform via api for instance where you have your usage data or you can pull that let's say into a staging table um, and kind of summarize it um, we can obviously pull that usage data in for instance um, if i were to um, look very quickly If I were to look at a, a record here uh, very quickly, so a billing item record, we can see that uh, you know we've got different strategy, statuses here, um, but we've also got one time recurring usage, you know, credit basically. So we can add additional charge types if you if, if you can come up with something else. But um, you know, at the moment, uh, these are the options we have. But again, usage is in there, so um, you can port in you know summary level usage data um if you want you can port in granular level data as well if you want but you know again it's it, it will be a lot of records to pull in but uh entirely up to you really um we can we can specify the service id uh sorry chris actually there uh for a particular usage item um if that's if that's essential uh, or potentially what you meant um so Again, we can kind of port that information in and then use that same process to go and combine, um, you know, recurring charges uh, with usage charges and with one-off charges as well, if there, if there are any onto a single, uh, again, a single invoice, okay? Um, we can obviously import those here as well if we don't have the benefit of, uh, you know, connecting to a database uh, or directly to where, you, where you, uh, you handle that. We can import it in here here as well there's an import wizard uh, it would just be a matter of coming up with a um, you know a format essentially oh. okay 
Okay, so, so, um, so that's importing the data. Okay, and then equally, if we didn't have a an integration, let's say over to our um, our invoice platform, we can actually uh, export the the transaction information if we if we wanted to do that. Um, and the very last thing I'll say, because uh, it appears we need to wrap up, so um, I could actually run the batch. Uh, you know, today let's say I had, which is probably the case. So let's say I had, you know, 150, 200 billable items that I had uh, that were going to recur today or that were going to, um, uh, you know, it needed to be processed basically even up to a test, whatever it may be, if you're looking up. Um, I can just run the batch as a one-off process. Um, and I can say, look, what are my invoice date options? I can say, you know, process all invoices today, end of current month, use closest billing date, use furthest, furthest date, or I can set, you know, the, the invoice date below. Um, and then again, I've got my, my invoice options. Um, and then as well, I could go ahead and schedule the actual batch. And effectively, that's just a, an invoice creation batch. So I can schedule a start date and a current runtime. Uh, I can set the frequency to daily, weekly, monthly. I can set an end time for it to stop. Um, and then again, just my, my invoice date options. So... Uh, again, I think this solution kind of offers you the ability to be quite granular, or if you're happy with, you know, if you just want to have this as a review phase, you can then just run your batch and create all your invoices in a, in a specific method. And that's all customizable. You know, if we were working with you, we'd kind of specify what those scenarios are so that you can select them um, for processing. Okay. Um, I think that is all we have time for. Thank you very much for, for joining. Um, as, as I said to start the call, I mean, you know, if you have any uh, questions, um, please do follow up. I think, Sarah, you're going to send out um, details yeah, to the guys, is that correct? I'll send out all the contact details following the call. Um, and if anyone does want the recording who hasn't already asked for it, I'll also send that out. Uh, yeah, no problem. I would, I would um, caveat. I'm actually away on annual leave uh, from tomorrow for a week, so um, I, I'm more than happy to book in a call with anybody that we get after if, uh, if if they would like to do that, um, and we can kind of talk in, in more detail. Um, but other than that, thank you, thank you very much for joining again. Um, it was a pleasure to to show you what we've built.